<laughs> okay, so Austin Meyer coming at you from Mike's Playhouse with my free coffee. <laughs> Which I always have to have because a comment on a YouTube video was I don't deserve to get coffee for free. So now I have to get free coffee every time I do a presentation to prove it. So, um, okay, uh, let's take a look back in time here just a little bit. If you have not seen this presentation on the X-Men 1140 flight model, uh, you should definitely watch it. Because in the video where I go over this whiteboard, I outline all the new stuff for X-Men 1140. Mike, you say you'll put a description in the video file? In the video description, I'll put a link to this uh, video. Great, so if you have not already seen this, watch that link first, then, come back to the video I'm about to give now. Because the video I'm gonna give now gives just a few small little updates, just a few little things I've improved for X-Men 1140 Beta 10. All right, let's talk about version numbers for just a moment. X-Men 1140 Beta 9 is on the net as this video is made, this video being made on October 21 of 2019. Um, the stuff I'm about to go over here, which is very minor as you see, but still matters a lot as you'll also see, uh, is going to be new for 1140 Beta 10 and beyond. And remember, if you're on the installer and you see 1140 Beta 9, that just means you haven't gotten this stuff yet because we haven't released it yet. If you say X-Men 1140 Beta 10 or greater, then this stuff is in there. And remember, RC follows Beta. So after you go through all the 1140 Betas, then we go to the RC, you see? Release so the release, candidate for the release candidate. Auto, yeah. And then some release candidate, first, second, third, fourth, whatever, is final. And so when you run your installer and you see an RC, that means we're, we're out of beta and we got the latest uh, thing we can have. All right, so what was that beep sound? Did somebody just shut off? No, we're still rolling? Okay. Um, okay, so let's take a, a look at this kind of small, subtle new stuff for X-Men 1140 uh, beta 10 and beyond that I've coded based on getting feedback from and testing the initial uh, X-Men 1140 stuff. Okay, so as I was saying before, I had to take time out to deal with the phone call real quick. Um, uh, X-Plane 1140 uh, RC follows the uh, beta version. So if you see RC anything, that means all the beta's done and now we're under our release candidates. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the first kind of major, uh, minor feature with major ramifications that we have in 1140 beta 10. So downwash, Mike, what's downwash? You remember what downwash uh, is? That's where the props pushing down. Prop on the, wash. That's yeah. prop wash. What's down wash? Well, I guess rotors are pushing down. Yeah, uh, that's prop wash. I that's don't down, know then. I fine. Don't know. Down wash is here that comes <laughs> off the wing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. So the down wash is what comes off the wing. And what is interesting is a wing will have kind of a lot of down wash, you know, like close to it, close to the wing, there'll be a lot of down wash. But it kind of, as you get farther away from the wing, there's kind of like less and less downwash. You see, take a careful look mm. at this image. There's a lot of downwash, you know, close in, but the farther you get above the wing, the less there is. This can't be surprising, right? Because I mean, a wing can't affect air a mile above it and a mile below it. So um, there are charts that list the downwash and they list how the downwash changes based on your DX or how far a horizontal, basically the downwash hits a horizontal stabilizer, which mm -hmm. like matters a lot. And so there's charts that show how far you are behind the wing and how far you are above the wing. And so what you do with these charts, you say, all right, well our basic, you know, our maximum downwash here might be say eight degrees from a given wing at a given coefficient of lift. Um, and based on how far you are behind it and above it, you're at a different point in the flow field and that changes the, uh, the, the downwash on the horizontal stabilizer. Explain's done this forever. Well, I went back and I took a more careful look at the charts, decided to be a little more anal retentive, and here's what I found. It's not how far you are, uh, the horizontal stabilizer is above the wing that matters. It's how far the horizontal stabilizer is above the downwash, the, down ah. the main central downwash stream, which I've just ah. drawn here as a wake. You see, that's what really matters. And if you look really carefully at the charts and interpret them carefully, you'll see, well, wait a minute. We don't want to set our downwash based on how far we are above the wing. We want to say based on how far we are above the central core downwash. Which and the is downwash, I guess, varies based on the shape of the wing. And, well, it varies based on the coefficient of lift. 
And the coefficient of lift varies with wing, ailerons, flaps, incidence, you know, varies with everything. So basically what you do is you can take a coefficient of lift and turn that into a downwash. And the coefficient of lift varies with everything. So before, this is less than 1140 beta 10. Earlier versions of X-Plane, I looked at how high the horizontal stabilizer was above the wing, which is, you know, good enough. But if you really want to dial it in, we need to, and we do this, starting with X-Plane 1140 beta 10 and beyond, we look at our dy, how far the horizontal stabilizer is above the wash. And so what that means is the greater the downwash, uh, the more this thing really comes down and the greater this distance from the wash to the horizontal stabilizer becomes and the more of kind of an alleviating factor there is in downwash as a result. So your formula didn't really change, you just changed where you got dy from. Yes, exactly. And I, now granted, when I reinterpreted the charts, getting this last little bit, you know, of dy, I also, uh, I adjusted the little constants ever so slightly yeah. to fit this new chart. Now, this may seem like a little bit of a boring conversation, right? You know, oh, okay, so we're measuring our, our vertical offset for downwash differently. How boring. It's actually not boring. This is extremely important in X-Plane because the downwash from the wing affects how much the tail is pushed down. How much the tail is pushed down affects how much the nose in the airplane comes up. Well, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. And as a result of the downwash not being quite as good as it could be, some of the airliners were really pitching up a lot. You see, they had too much downwash, and so you'd set your takeoff trim, you'd go to full power, you'd, and, and you'd notice you didn't have to pull the nose up very much to raise the nose, because the downwash was a little bit too strong, because the stab was being treated as being a little too close to the center of the downwash, you see, than it really was. And then on takeoff, the nose of the airliner would kind of fly up all by itself due to the, the downwash being a little too high. But when I retested all of our airliners with this new wash model, all of a sudden, when I said about a 25 to 50% takeoff trim, something like that, I'd really have to pull the nose to get that nose up. Then I'd release the pull on the nose and I could just basically take my hands off the stick and the airliner would be coming up at about 180, 190, maybe 200 knots, which is what you want the airliner to do if it has not been trimmed, you see? Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, due to this simple change, all of a sudden, all the airliners are just, you know, you set your takeoff trim and they're just got a nice solid feel and rotation and they just hold a nice speed and pitch attitude without any further stick input on, on the takeoff. And um, it really helps it feel like an actual airplane, not so much just flying away. So this matters a lot. It's a small thing, but it's huge. We need to mention that you have to check the box. Experimental, experimental flight. Experimental flight model. That's right. And right. you may wonder, why is there a checkbox for experimental flight model? And that's so that you don't break somebody's aftermarket plane, right? Exactly. So Ben Sopnik, my right-hand man at Laminar Research, he and I do disagree on certain things. And one of the things we disagree on is, if it was up to me, everything would be the latest flight model all the time. We'd always be in experimental mode. Ben says, no, we preserve what we've done since 11.0, so all the existing airplanes continue to work. And if you want to see Austin's latest science experiments, then you turn on experimental checkbox. Um, so it's an area where we disagree, but we're doing it his way. So you turn on the experimental flight model to engage all this. Otherwise, the old flight model is And preserved. really what I would say is turn the damn thing on, and then only if you have a problem, turn it off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no question. Uh, no question at all. So at any rate, that's uh, a new thing for 1140. Small, but big. Okay, here's another thing that we did, uh, new for 1140. Faster body shadowing. What's body shadowing? You ought to be able to tell from the diagram. Body shadow. Oh, well, it has to do with, um, I guess, the light on the air. I don't know. No. I don't know. What is body? I don't know what body shadowing. Uh, okay, here's what it is. What is that? When, when you enter a wing in Plane Maker, there's always yeah. parts of the wing that are inside an engine to sell or inside a fuselage. Oh, and they don't produce and, lift. Right, like exactly. The rest of the and and X-Plane needs to know this so we can hide these things away. You can hide the wing away from uh, the air. But here's the interesting thing the pressure flow field from the wing does leak over this, the, the engine nacelle and it does leak over the body, okay? So in X-Plane, you do want to bring your wings into the center line. You do want to bring your wings through the nacelle. When you design an airplane in Plane Maker, bring the wings from the center line to the tip. Do not feel like you have to hide them in the bodies and nacelles. Now with X-Plane 1140 beta 10 and above, and granted X-Plane's done this for a long time, but now it does it a little better and faster. Um, X-Plane will take the parts of the wings that are inside the fuselage and the nacelles and not completely hide them away because some of that flow field, the, the pressure does come across, but it'll hide them away an appropriate amount according to uh, an absolutely just 
expert aerodynamicist I spoke to about this problem, uh, who said that about 70%, believe it or not, of that lift will carry across a stabilizer or a fuselage. Huh, an aero so, aerodynamicist? Yeah, what? guy named uh, Mark Page. Um, just a, a great guy that, working uh, on a few projects. I've job description before. <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah, so at any rate, well, it's, it's major. But, um, so at any rate, that's part of the body shadowing. It's what part of the airplane, oh yeah, and even the horizontal stabilizer inside the fuselage, same thing. But that's yeah. only 50% of body shadowing. Here's the other 50%. What about the wake that a stabilizer leaves blocking, or a fuselage leaves blocking flow over the horizontal stabilizer? For example, the horizontal stabilizer here might get, depending on where it is vertically, might get a little bit less effectiveness because the air is slowed down by these, uh, by these nacelles out here. Also, the fuselage uh, might be blocking a little bit of the flow to a certain degree on the inner part of the horizontal stabilizer. Um, I can promise you in my Lancer Evolution, I found from experimentation that all of the, the rudder in my airplane that's blocked, that's behind the fuselage, basically if you look at my airplane, it, um, it, it looks like, here, I'll draw a profile real quick. That's okay, there, there's my airplane in profile. And uh, I can promise you from experimentation that uh, this part of the rudder here might as well not exist. It's useless. Closest, it doesn't do the, one, the part closest to the uh, vertical stabilizer. What's that? The cl part closest to the vertical right. stabilizer. Well, this, this part of the rudder. Oh, the rudder, the rudder, rudder. I'm sorry. The, rudder, if yes. I didn't say rudder, I meant to. This I rudder is in flow that's gotten all slowed down and decelerated yeah. by the fuselage. And by the time the flow makes it back to the rudder, it's been so slowed down by the boundary layer and stuff like that in the fuselage that it doesn't do anything. And I know this based on testing an X-plane, how much rudder I need to make the airplane do a thing compared to what I have to do in reality. You see, I've compared X-plane to the real thing to prove this. The, the, the part of the rudder that's down here behind the fuselage is basically just for looks. It doesn't do a darn thing. But um, so at any rate, the body shadowing now kind of applies uh, that fuselage uh, and uh, nacelle drag reduction and puts that over the horizontal stab. And so again, it's kind of a minor thing making this a little more faster and uh, accurate, but just these two things alone cause the aircraft to have a significantly different, uh, more solid, stable pitch response um, due to the having less of this downwash slamming the tail down and a little less effectiveness on the horizontal stabilizer, again, stabilizes the airplane. Slow airplane just feels a lot more solid and stable due to these changes in 1140 beta. Um, and people have been saying X-plane is too like sensitive for a long time and it's kind of interesting uh, really kind of dialing in the physics to get it just exactly perfect. Um, mm. The final thing that's new for 1140 beta 10 is uh, it used to be with airliners. And tell me if you've ever seen this or heard about this. You're in an airliner and cruise and the thing just kind of seems to do like this. Like it'll accelerate and it'll slow down. It'll accelerate and it'll slow down. It's kind of like bumping into a mock wall at like 0.85. Have you ever seen this or heard of anybody complain about this? I don't think kind of I have. Okay, well, it's kind of rare. It doesn't happen all the time. But you see an airliner kind of doing Kind of, you know, it'll start to speed up and then it'll slow down. It'll start, and you're kind of sitting there bumping up against Mach 0.85 or something like that. It feels like you're bumping into a Mach wall. And in a sense, you kind of were. So let's take a look at an airfoil. Let's say this is uh, an airfoil, obviously a cross section of an airliner in flight. And let's say you see it's moving on along at Mach 0.9. Okay, fast. Well, that's citation 10 speeds. But the air speeds up to go over the top of the wing, right? You know this, the air speeds up at the top to mm -hmm. go over the top of the wing. Okay, Mike's nodding quietly. But yes, 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 of course. That's how so, it creates lift. Uh, um, right, so it speeds up. If you're going close enough to the speed of sound, the air will speed up to supersonic over the top of the wing. Oh. And so even though the airplaner might only be doing, uh, say, Mach 0.9, the airplane might be doing Mach 0.9, the flow over the wing might be Mach point, you know, 1.05 or something like that. In other words, there's a shock wave here building up over the uh, low pressure section of the wing where the air is speeding up. Hmm. And as this happens, as your Mach number comes up, your coefficient of drag starts coming up because this Mach area is, the, the, the supersonic area is slowly building from just a little bubble in the lowest lift or the lowest uh, pressure part of the wing and therefore the highest speed because Bernoulli. Um, and that, that uh, supersonic region is spreading out and the shock waves getting bigger. And so the drag, in reality, it smoothly comes up 
as you run into this uh, growing, slowly growing shock wave. And starting with 1140 beta 10, I have a smooth transition, which I should have had right from the outset, but now it's dialed in there to be smooth. And so you won't have these airliners kind of like getting a shock wave and slowing down, getting a shock wave and slowing down. Instead, the shock wave gradually starts and builds up and the drag kind of gradually comes up and the, and the airliner just kind of terminals out at Mach 0.86 or whatever it's going to go without any kind of like bouncing off the Mach wall, so to speak. So um, this little smooth uh, interpolation is uh, going to make those airliners fly smoother uh, as they get up their terminal speed. So at any rate, these are some little things I got from 1140. And interestingly, I found them by going through all of the airplanes for iPhone to make sure that we have the best possible fleet of aircraft for uh, global mobile, as we're calling it, which is the iPhone version. Because remember, the iPhone uses the same flight model as the desktop now, okay? So um, when I test all of the airplanes for iPhone, we're improving the sim for desktop as well. The two have already converged from a flight model standpoint, iPhone and desktop, and more convergence is inevitable in the future, of course. So uh, these are little changes, and um, I guess one other little change. Uh, in a recent video, we had the key on the honeycomb yoke going backwards. Remember that? You turn the key mm -hmm. and they go the wrong way in the honeycomb yeah. yoke. That should be addressed as well for 1140 beta 10, so the honeycomb yoke key should work just right. And actually, and all the lights were wrong too. Like you would flip the lights, beacon, taxi uh -huh. and all that, and it would flip a light, but like the beacon would do the taxi and the taxi Oops. would do the beacon or whatever. Okay, well, we'll get that too. All right, so maybe that won't be an 1140 beta 10. <laughs> that maybe might be, that'll 11, be RC1. Beta 11 or well, or RC1 or RC2, yeah. but okay, we'll, we'll get that as well. So, um, okay, so that's it. A little bit of a short and uh, slightly boring uh, video, but this stuff does absolutely matter. So make the airplanes feel a lot nicer to fly.